With Philadelphia Eagles training camp just a few weeks away, it's time for our positional previews, starting with the most important position, it's quarterback. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Eagles fans? Welcome into this Tuesday edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. I'm one of your two hosts, Louis DiBiase, joined as always by Gino Camilleri. You can also find our work over at Bleacher Report. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. Training camp in a few weeks, Gino, we're going to start our positional preview. And today we, of course, lead with the most important position that dictates pretty much all of your success, and it's quarterback. And we're going to talk a lot about Jalen Hurts, but I also think this is an exciting group behind Jalen. Like the Kenny Pickett-Tanner McKee battle, I think it's going to be fun to watch in training camp if McKee actually gets a proper shot at QB2. He was, to me, the best preseason Eagles quarterback last year that I've seen in ages, right? And then McKee comes in as a former first-round pick, a former starter to help compete. Like I think it's a fun room compared to the last few years where you kind of knew what it was. Great point where you look at last year, it's Marcus Mariota as quarterback two. You knew Tanner McKee was going to be probably number three, learn behind Jalen Hurts, learn behind Marcus. And before that, it was Gardner Minshew. Now you have a legitimate competition, in my opinion. Yes, you did do that pick swap to go out and get Kenny Pickett. Right. But there's a reason a team moves on from a former first round quarterback as quickly as they did. And now he is competing for QB2, but I think it's going to be good for everybody on that offense, Lou, because the most important thing QB2 and QB3 can do, or four with Will Greer as well, is help the wide receivers, the running backs, the offensive line, the tight end, be yeah. evaluated during Correct. the preseason. I, and you I said that a lot. Every I mean, single year. How many summers were you like, man, I can't get a read on these receivers because I'm watching. Orson is out there. He's, he's I'm watching going behind Sinet. the receivers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sinet, exactly. Yeah, so I totally agree with that. I think in that way, too, it's going to help the players compete throughout the summer. I think it's going to be a good battle. But, of course, Jalen Hurts bouncing back from that final five games that left a sour taste in some people's mouths like that's the priority number one to get the Eagles back to Super Bowl contenders in 2024 and we've talked about this on the show before not just getting him back to 2022 but heck even the first 11 weeks of the year last year I've said it a million times you know the turnovers were there but he was still a leading MVP favorite 11 12 weeks through the year after leading many double digit comebacks late in the second half of games beating some top tier quarterbacks beating some top tier defenses shootouts you name it getting that version of Jalen Hurts back is so important Gino so I want to start with Jalen and I want to do this with just a few questions this is how we'll do this preview so number one what's something you're confident you'll see from Jalen Hurts in 2024 I know that's a very broad question but what's thing what's something for you like you know you're going to get this from Jalen heading into the season I think you are going to see a more mature Jalen Hurts and by that he is going to take care of the football way better than he did we're on the same wavelength it's funny because i wrote the same thing as i think the turnovers will go down so we're on the same page and the reason i say he's maturing in that aspect is because now you have this ultimate check down of saquon barkley live to see another day jalen hurts this is what howie roseman has put together as the front runner for the unit that is going to lead this team. It is this offense. They are paid as such. They have the weapons to do as such. And you're going to lose games if you turn the ball over in the manner that you did last year, in the spots that you did. Lou, how many times was he turning the ball over in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, where you're saying you could put a team away, and now they're right back in the game, Mm -hmm. and that ultimately led to their downfall. I mean, the the Arizona Cardinals game, you know the defense can't get off the field, but regardless, you need Jalen Hurts to be perfect every single time he has the football, much like he did in 2022, where it was he was yeah. barely turning the ball over. 
Yeah, and you still want him. I mean, of course, he's got A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You want Jalen Hurts to be aggressive and stretch the field as part of what made them elite in 2022. But as you mentioned, he was very good at picking and choosing his spots. Like, he had a lot of explosive plays in 2022, but he didn't lo- have a lot of, like, turnover-worthy passes that were just, no, 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 oh, my gosh, how did he mm-hmm. complete that, you know, Carson Wentz style, that really, or Jameis Winston style. That wasn't Jalen. It was last year to a degree, and I think, you know, a part of that was – the lack of faith in the offensive structure. And I also think just the lack of structure in general. He didn't have a lot of check down options, right? He didn't have a lot of hot reads during blitzes. There were times a team would run an all-out blitz and Brian Johnson has three vertical routes going. So some Mm -hmm. of that's on Jalen, but other times too, he was just trying to make a play in a tough environment. I think Kellen Moore coming in will also prevent those turnovers with just the multifaceted philosophy. So overall, I think we're on the same page. I'm very confident. You're not going to see Jalen be a 14 plus interception guy every single year. I just, I can't see that. And I think the most important place that he is going to improve is at the end of the season knowing when it counts the most because the last four regular season games Lou two interceptions one interception one interception and that's when he just lost confidence and he was just trying to be Superman right and he has to know that he has everything around him he has arguably the most athleticism of any quarterback to just hey let me take the ball scamper get another two three yards yeah be the Jalen Hurts of old at times but just be mature Know that you have Saquon Barkley there. Let's get the ball out of our hands. Let him go and pick up the extra yards because without you, Jalen, this ship is going nowhere. Well, Gino, that's another good point that I think could help the turnovers go down is the fact that he can run again more this year. I think last year, him being injured kept him in the pocket, but he still wanted to make an impact, make explosive plays, right? And I think maybe that was a part of it too where he couldn't always run, so he chose to be even more aggressive inside the pocket. Running out of necessity. That's where he has yeah. to continue. Whereas last to, year, sometimes he just couldn't really do it, right? So he just stayed mm-hmm. in and tried to chuck it downfield. And at times, knowing when to live to see another day by not taking that extra hit, right? And he's now in his fourth year as a starter, Lou, and he is going to just continue to learn how to be a quarterback more and more every single year. And those are the little things that regardless of the offensive coordinator, you can measure those by taking away the offense, by taking away the outside factors. Like is Jalen taking care of the football? Is he throwing the ball up into double coverage? You're like, Oh my God, thank goodness. Devontae Smith went up and got it because that should have been an interception. He has to get back to, Oh, great throw on time. Right. There was no need to force it. It was there. It was the first read we're moving this offense down the field. That's where the Eagles really started to just put teams away in 2022. And that's how you have to get back to it. But at the same time, a lot of it comes to coaching because there has to be that Mm -hmm. balance with the play calling element as well with the, with the quarterback. So when it comes to something, I have a question about regarding Jalen heading into this year that I need answered. I don't really think it has to do with on field production. Gino, I am confident he's not going to become this turnover worthy quarterback, especially in Kellen Moore's offense. I think he's going to be healthy and get back to being a multi-dimensional threat. I don't even think the guy at the end of the year that suddenly was back to the 2021 player that bailed on pockets and wasn't seeing the field. Well, I don't think that's who he is again. The question I have is it's about the culture. It's about that relationship with him and Nick Sirianni. If they're on the same page, if things don't go well at the end of the year, like it did last year, or there's a tough stretch, how is that culture going to respond? And that, unfortunately, the head coach quarterback dynamic is not the most important one considering the Eagles current setup, but it is in this standpoint, like if things get tough again, are these two going to be on the same page? Like right now we don't, I assume that it, they are, but Again, you know, you have no idea. So that that's my main question is just how are they going to respond again with adversity? Because unfortunately mm-hmm. for Jalen Hurts, who normally he answers adversity in a very well manner, last year he didn't. So that's to me my ultimate question. I was trying to kind of pick at your point there, and then you ultimately hit on it. How does Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni and Kellen Moore and the rest of the leaders, I think, respond to adversity. But it all comes down to Jalen Hurts, right? And there were times towards the end of the year, and we've said it on our show, this isn't revisionist history, No, that you could see his body language was just clearly broken. He was yeah, It wasn't just stoic. Things. He looked rattled. He needs yeah. to get back to that. How, how does he handle adversity? Is it mm. taking the high road of just being Jalen Hurts of old and – 
just being the most calm, cool, and collected guy on the field, and that's what got the Eagles to where they were in 2022? Or does that snowball start to descend downhill? But I have all faith that they've kind of left that in 2023, and and, and I believe that they're going to get back to those ways because they have the leadership in-house on that offense. It's not just him. The wide receivers are going to help so much. You have the offensive linemen like Jordan Mailata who completely understand the culture. I think everybody in that offensive unit understands, and it all starts with QB1. And Jalen Hurts, man, I think we have to touch on the idea as well, Lou, that Howie Roseman hit another home run with that contract, signing him as soon as he did because – I mean, what's Dak going to command at this point, right? Like 65 yeah. million. And what are, what are guys like Joe Burrow and the, or Joe Burrow already got his deal, excuse me, but the next generation of guys right. going to get, I'm happy that Jalen hurts is the guy in the team is confident because they wouldn't have paid him that money. If they didn't believe he can respond to adversity again and again and again, if it was a one hit wonder, they wouldn't have paid him because we'd be in Carson Wentz 2.0 scenario. Yeah, so it's going to be a fun room, and it's not just because of Jalen Hurts, but Kenny Pickett and Tanner McKee as well. We'll get into some things we're excited about heading into 2024 quarterback. Coming up next, don't go anywhere. This is the Locked On Eagles podcast. Today's episode of the Locked On Eagles podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Summertime means baseball. The NBA Finals are over. The Boston Celtics are the champs. The Stanley Cup is wrapping up. You can bet on baseball, though, and futures, NFL, soccer, you name it, and more over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if you can use to bet. If you win, to bet everything from, again, who's going to be the MVP in the Stanley Cup, win that con Smythe, who's going to hit one out of the park for the Philadelphia Phillies, who have been red hot all year. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel is America's number one sports book in the official sports betting partner of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Guys, you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Got to turn down the volume with all the shouting? We'll make the switch to Lockdown Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day we are diving into our training camp positional previews and of course we're starting with quarterback some questions some things that we're confident in when it comes to QB1 Jalen Hurts and you know I want to get it now into you know some things we're excited about at quarterback and before we get into more Kenny Pickett Tanner McKee talk one thing I'm looking forward to with Jalen this year is him being implemented in a Kellen Moore offense that is so much different than anything we've seen with him. Even going back to Doug Peterson in 2020, Nick Sirianni's offense the last few years with Shane Steichen, with Brian Johnson, like seeing how Jalen's going to respond to an offense that has more pre-snap motion. You're under center more. You might have some, you know, traditional play action. I think sometimes it's going to require you to go through progressions more. Like I think this is going to test his inside the pocket ability a lot more but I think that's kind of what he wanted last year down the stretch and again you look at the tape of 2022 he did everything that confirms to me he's capable of being in an offense like this but we just really have I don't know if we've ever seen him in this kind of style of offense so I'm really excited to see how it looks with uh, you know Kellen Moore too he's going to implement a lot of stuff Jalen's been doing well to maximize that mobility but it's going to be different than what he's used to it's going to give you a big impression of mentally how much Jalen Hurts can handle as a quarterback. And yeah. I think in the best of ways, because you've probably been the biggest proponent of how well he has produced inside the pocket the last couple mm-hmm. seasons. And if Kellen Moore truly can get these defenses in a jam where their eyes are going everywhere and you're able to get these guys open without it just being one-on-one battles on the outside. And if the guys on the outside don't win their one-on-ones, nobody's getting open. And I think this helps them in two ways, Lou. One, just the simple fact that they were at the bottom of the league in motion last year, now probably going to be towards the top of the league. Simply just moving guys around, making defenses think is going to help them a ton. But at the same time, if you look at how teams started to defend the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts, it started to move more towards that Patrick Mahomes, let's keep everything underneath, take right. away their explosive play. And what does that do for a defense? Well, when you're capping everything and you're able to keep your eyes to the quarterback, keep it underneath, 
well, you're going to see that Jalen Hurts, he's trying to escape the pocket. Mm. Let's go get him. We're going to all rally to the quarterback. Well, if now all of a sudden you're in some man matchups or even zone and like all of a sudden there's a blown assignment and maybe Jalen misses it, but all the guys, they got to turn their back to the ball. That's going to open up the field of play even more for Jalen Hurts to show off his athleticism. And in a smart way, he can't be like, oh, they're in man. They turned her back. I'm just going right away. But at the same time, Kellen Moore, he's got those plays in his back pocket that were pretty good for the Philadelphia Eagles the last couple of years that Nick Sirianni is hopefully going to carry over. Oh, for sure. And him not having that mobility again last year, Gino, also allowed defenses to do what you're talking about and saying, we're going to sit in this deep cover too, and we're going to make you slice and dice us. Nobody was taking the top off the ball. Clay Watkins wasn't doing his job. He wasn't wasn't. finishing routes. There was no reason to even worry about the deep pass. If we can keep Devontae and AJ in this 15-yard bracket, we're going to be able to defend everything. And to your point, Jalen couldn't move. He there were points where he yeah. look at that stretch. Like, and the defense right knew the Dallas it. game. He could not move. No, and, and defenses Dallas. knew it. They didn't fear him the same way they did as a runner in 2022. And for the first time in a long time, like yeah, DeAndre Swift had a thousand yards, but the run game was not the same last year as it was in years past. So this year with Saquon Barkley, with that healthy mobility that Jalen's going to possess as long as he stays healthy, that's also going to open things up. And I think defenses mm-hmm. won't be able to guard them as as much in that way. Is there something that you know outside? of it could be Jalen Hurts or with Pickett or you know McKee that you're really looking forward to this summer and then during the season? Well, I think we could talk about the the two guys in Will Greer in a minute, but I think Jalen Hurts, just knowing that this is his team and there being no questions at quarterback, because think of where we have been on this show. I mean, heck, even back to 2020. Yeah. I mean, that there was quarterback controversy. How great is it that year after year, regardless, we know that there's going to be a quarter coordinator change and a potential head coach change. But I think it's fair to say, Lou, that th- this guy is the guy and he isn't going anywhere. They have clearly built this thing around him. They've signed guys till 2029 for a reason. It puts my mind at ease to say, yeah, put all that stuff in the past. Like, let's just continue to focus on the future because he's not going anywhere. It's, it's not, oh, is it Foles or Wentz? Is it Wentz or Hurts? It's it's Hurts' ship, and how can we do everything to assist him? And and they clearly have given him the keys and then some. Like, yeah. the we have used over the last couple of years of him being, trying to be the Formula One driver and then becoming the car, and he is the whole thing. Like, it, it is nothing without Jalen Hurts. He is the identity right now, and that's what we have wanted. You win or lose by the quarterback. You die or lose by the quarterback. Yeah. And I hope that he just gets back to those ways because that's that's who you need to win the NFC. And that's who you need to go and beat Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and all these guys getting those extensions because he got paid that money for a reason. And he has to go continue to show it. And I think they did a good job of bringing in high quality backups without, like you said, causing any sort of 2020 like distractions of drafting a quarterback in the second round. Mm-hmm. They got high quality players to me. Kenny Pickett and Tanner McKee. Again, Kenny Pickett is not a starting quarterback in the NFL, in my opinion. He is not a first round talent. It was 2022 is one of the worst quarterback classes in NFL history, which is embarrassing for me because I liked a lot of those guys. But Pickett as a backup Geno in an offense with a lot of talent showed that he has some mobility. He has some clutch gene in the fourth quarter. He can make plays, has some good touch, like in a structure with a lot of talent. I think he can be an upgrade over what you had in Marcus Mariota last year. Heck, even what you had in Gardner Minshew in 2021 and 2022. On top of Tanner McKee, I'm really excited about the step he can take this year. I don't know if he's going to get a fair crack at being the backup, Gino, but you even mentioned it at the beginning of the show. They didn't trade a third rounder straight up for Pickett. They just swapped picks. If they would have gave Pittsburgh outright a three or a four, I'd be like, okay, he's obviously QB two. Yeah, exactly. But because it was only a pick swap, I don't know. I think there could be a competition here. If McKee lights up the preseason again like he did last year, that's not something you just ignore, even without the mobility. And there would definitely be more of a, a scheme – change if he was the QB if Jalen Hurts went down I think when they brought in Kenny Pickett they're touching on the idea that you mentioned that they can probably form this offense more to what Jalen Hurts does to hopefully give them a higher ceiling than what a Marcus Mariota or a Gardner and he can actually pass he can be a better passer than Mariota I mean that was you have to could not throw the football 
No, he he couldn't. I mean, and he never. Minshew could. couldn't run. He so couldn't here's some throw place middle ground. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, you hope that you found that middle Hopefully. ground. But, but the thing with Tanner McKee, man, is he really showed you some interesting things last year in the preseason, and now how much better is that talent that he's going to be throwing to? Like if he yeah. finds a real connection with some of these young guys, like the Johnny Wilsons of the world and the Adonis Smiths. I mean. Who's to say that he can't put on a real show and just Kenny Pickett just he can't yeah. hit anything and his arm strength just doesn't look good and he's throwing mm-hmm. ducks and it's a real possibility. Pittsburgh moved on for that exact reason. Yeah, but on the bright to side, Mason Rudolph, right? We can't just guarantee he has this job. I he mean, was in a Matt Canada offense last year for a fair. large majority of it. So you're going to be in a Kellen Moore offense if he gets back to that Pittsburgh, like just time and touch like just put it on the spot where it's supposed to be where hopefully Kellen Moore can can help him in that regard maybe Kenny Pickett just is clearing away the number two but Tanner McKee man I think he is a, a yeah. fan favorite here at Locked on Eagles we we had shows just about him last he was impressive year. because it wasn't just you know he was lighting up the box score in the preseason he was making some wow throws like some pro like a, a throw that oh, like yeah. a six seven year veteran like some would corner make. posts yes. like into the the honey hole that was just yeah. like oh, and he did it over and time. over again yep. so that that's a guy i'm very interested in his development and like you said pickett definitely was in a mac canada offense last year and he did have a good otas it sounded like the back shoulder throw was his bread and butter all spring so that's good to hear Overall, I think that competition behind Jalen Hurts is going to help this football team. And like you said, it'll at least at the bare minimum help you better evaluate this roster moving forward the rest of the way. But I do want to switch gears. Oh, go ahead. Real quick before we go there. I think Kenny Kenny knowing what his role is right now Mm -hmm. is going to help Jalen Hurts as well. Right, and he wouldn't have in Pittsburgh. If he fully buys into the backup quarterback, which we've yeah. heard, you heard the rumblings out of Pittsburgh, take him as you wish. Right? But again, that's with Russell Wilson, and you were the first rounder there. Like he, he knows he's not beating out Jalen Hurts. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> if he buys in and Tanner he McKee really pushes the pace and like he knows that he's a backup and he can just continue to harness that role, who's to say the things that he learned in Pittsburgh can't help Jalen Hurts and vice versa, him bouncing ideas off sure. of each other. It's a different set of eyes. And I think them continuing to try and find upgrades at that position ever since, I mean, Nate Sudfeld and Nick, Fo- they've always done it. It's just something they're never going to sit on their laurels. They're going to continue to try and find better options. It's a great room right now. And Will Greer, he's no pushover either. I mean, he is a solid Fourth or fifth? Year. No. How long has Will Greer been? I don't know. Like well, he played in college seven. for like a hundred years too yeah. before that, so I feel like I've just heard of Will Greer forever. <laughs> but at the same time, he's not even like a Clayson, Clayton Thorson level player that he's just right. going to be inept when he's out there in the preseason. He's going to give you some fair looks. And sure. overall, you got four pretty good quarterbacks in this room. But it all starts with QB one and what he can yep. do, and the sky's the limit with him. And is he a uh, MVP favorite this season? I I think he should be. I agree. We're going to get into some Jalen Hurts stat over-unders coming up next as we wrap up this Tuesday edition. All right, guys, we're wrapping up this Tuesday edition of Lockdown Eagles, previewing the quarterback position as training camp for the Eagles is just around the corner, still a few weeks away. But before you know it, there will be Eagles football again down in South Philadelphia at the NovaCare Complex. And to wrap things up, Gino, I want to do some uh, stat over-unders for you with Jalen Hurts in 2024. Compared to his numbers in 2023, do we think he'll have more or less than his box score from last year, where he did start all 17 games, but at the same time, he wasn't healthy. So I think you'll probably agree that the rushing numbers, I almost want to say, will probably be going over on most of those. You would hope that he gets back to his pace that he was on back in 2022 that really right. pushed the tempo there. And he should be close to 1,000 yards every year. Just, I mean, going through the motions. I mean, not even trying to be 1,000 yards, right? And he can do that again. He can do that again without a doubt with the offense that they have, with the weapons that they have, with the offensive line the way it is, who's to say that he can't get back to the way he was in 2022? Yeah, so his rushing yards, you're right. They definitely, in 2021 and 2022, he was at 784 and then 760. He had 13 rushing touchdowns in 2022. Last year, he actually went up to, I can't believe he had 15 rushing touchdowns. That's insane. Um, I I would say I would take the over on – 
on the 605 rushing yards, but with Saquon Barkley in house with Kellen Moore's offense being more creative in the red zone, I think those rushing touchdown numbers will go down just a little. I would still take the over on 10 plus double digits, but 15, that was the most all time in a single season for a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. 784, 766, 05. Yeah. I would expect if you're just playing numbers higher than 605. You're just playing I, averages. Yeah, I'm not going to take the 760, but I take over 605. Lou, in 2020, he started four games and he had 354 yards. That's what he was I'm almost saying. averaging 100 yards a game. <laughs> On a good day, you're saying this guy can. I'm saying he's going to be a thousand yard receiver at some point in his career, and I'm going to yeah. take the over 605 to get to that point at some point. And there were no explosive runs either. He only averaged 3.9 yards per attempt last year. Mm -hmm. He was at 5.6, 5.6, and 4.6 the previous three years. So, you know, that's the other thing. It's not just the yeah. attempts and the loss of speed, but the explosive plays just weren't there either. It was His all long like just one yard sneaks. In 2022 to 24 in 2023. Yeah. So you saw that he just couldn't push that pace down the field. And I would expect him to get back there, in my opinion. And an explosive Jalen Hurts – a guy that the, puts the NFL on the run, that's where you want him to be. So he was at 3,858 passing yards last year. In 2022, he was at 3,701. Are we saying Jalen Hurts gets to 4,000 passing yards this year? I say he will. I'm going to take the he over better. on the passing yards. Yeah, He better. He better get to 4,000 or they are. He would have last year if they didn't collapse, you know. Let's go back to just betting the law of averages. Yeah. No way AJ Brown falls off a quick as badly as he did after that six to seven game stretch, right? Or like, Devontae Smith gets hurt and AJ at the end of the year. One hundred percent. Their running back is not going to give you as little as right. he did last year when it comes to catching balls. I believe Dallas Goddard should get back to the pace that he right. was on if he stays healthy. What they brought in behind the big two wide receivers. Everything is sane. He should be a 4,000-yard receiver. If he plays all 17 games, if he takes care of the football, without a doubt, Lou. I thought he was going to get there last year if he continued that pace, and it yeah. took a historic fall to not right. get there. So it, if you just look at percentages, you would have to say 4,000 is clearly within reach. Yeah, well, even two years ago, he was at 3,701, yep. and they were blowing teams out. So half the time in the second half, you know, they were just running out the clock. Yeah, so how many times thing. was he on the bench in the fourth? Right. Countless. Yeah. I think he gets to 4K this year as well. I'll take the over there. The passing touchdowns, too, he only had – so he's had 22 and 23 the last two mm -hmm. years. I want to say he gets over 25. I don't want to say 30 because, again, he's so instrumental in this area with his legs – in the red zone especially, and I don't think they're just going to remove the tush push this year, but I, I think over 23 is going to happen. Because you would have to imagine their situation. He's not going to get 15 rushing touchdowns. <laughs> that, like, like, if you Wes take Watkins away... caught touchdowns for you last yes. year. And, like, there's gonna and if you take away, like, three or four of those year. rushing touchdowns, you know, and add those to passing, he's almost, he's already sniffing 30. And how many times will they actually have a successful screen that'll probably get taken to the house? And yeah. Right down to the one or two yard line, and twenty seven would probably be a good number yeah. for him. Like twenty seven and a half, I think. Twenty three is low for a quarterback that good, though. Even with the run Definitely. game, I, I'm Wait, taking the over. I don't know if thirty is the number, just because the the legs is such a big. No, He's like I'll say north 30. of twenty five. I'll say twenty five is the line. Would you say thirty five total? Yes, because I think he's I think he's gonna get at least I still think he'll get ten rushing touchdowns. Yeah, I think thirty five total. Yeah, probably. Oh man, probably ten or eleven with his legs. You still have yeah. Saquon, which is such a, a difficult yeah. outlier to throw in there as well. But could Saquon be a boost in the passing game? And yeah, at the end of the day, it's totals with Jalen Hurts. You have to just yes. look at what is the entire output of this guy. Yeah, because he still had 38 touchdowns last year total. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's crazy. Bad. That's crazy. Yeah, so if somebody, if somebody were just to read blind Jalen Hurts' box score passing, he'd be like, this guy's elite. Like, they paid $200 million for somebody throwing 23 touchdowns. He had 38 touchdowns. Like, that's the thing. They all count the same. So I agree. Yeah, with his Jaylen, market got, share. It's a lot. Yes. Yeah, you got to do the totals for sure. Uh, one more here. Interceptions. He was at 15 last year. 
Considering what we talked about segment one, Gino, I'll take the under. I just I can't see him. It's impressive that the year before he only had six, nine in 2021, and then four in 2020. I don't know if he'll be at six this year, but he's not going to be at 15. I say seven to 10 is probably that range. If he goes north of 15, we have That's a to problem. ask yes. some legitimate questions. Mm-hmm. About if those him. habits were not removed this offseason and he's throwing north of like – yeah, 12, 13. And again, Gino, you have to contextualize all these interceptions because last year there was a bunch of them that I said I would have made that throw too. Like, can't mm-hmm. that wasn't his fault, right? Especially so you got to contextualize them. Season, yeah. But 15 is a lot, even just in a microscope. If you look at the really good years of Carson Wentz, seven yeah. was around that number. Seven was I, always his line. I think, nine, plus seven. I think yeah. single digits, keeping it right around nine and a half to, yes. to 10 is probably a good number for Jalen. And Hurt. we can have a conversation like if that hits that number, like what the picks were. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm with you. So touchdowns, you're thinking 35 to 40, mm-hmm. he should account for interceptions. And another thing. And Lou, fumbles. Fumbles. Mm-hmm. How many fumbles did he have last year? Yep. He has to protect the football. If he's going to set the tone, that's the one thing. If they harp on our ball, protect the ball, Jalen Hurts has to be the guy more than anybody because he he almost buried them a couple times last year. Yeah, so he had 2023. I'm trying to find his. Yeah, he had nine fumbles. That's brutal. That's brutal. So, so he had 24 turnovers. 24 turnovers. Which is that's just a plus again minus but, of fourteen, can't yeah. be that. Can't be that. It that's has just to be again way higher. And you know, again, you you have to look at the whole sample size. It, to me, I want to believe that was a one off because the other years he's been in the NFL and even college, that just mm-hmm. was not his style. I don't think he's suddenly gonna. Maybe he will because even Carson Wentz, as we mentioned, like he always had fumbling issues. But you just said like there were three years straight where he had twenty plus passing touchdowns and seven or. Uh, less interceptions, which was a record at one point, um, which was in there with like the Brady's and Manning's and Breeze for efficiency. But then t- it got more and more where the bad habits did build up, and then it did become who he was. With Jalen, just because that's not who he is now doesn't mean it can't be. But he just that's why he needs to nip it in the butt like right now. And I, and I think he will. He better. He yeah. better for the offense that, is too talented not to. You know, yeah, for that much money that they invested in him. Yeah, And just understanding how important it is to take care. You can't turn the ball over 24 no. times, regardless of what position you play. You yeah. cannot. And especially at quarterback, because then you go in the meeting rooms and it's like, oh, coach, how can you get on me when Jalen's turning the ball over? Like he, he turned the ball over 24 times. You're not going to look at the running back who turned it over twice, right? He right. has to be the one to set the tone. But that's why they paid him the money. That's why he won the job from the guy that we keep talking about and Carson Wentz, who led this thing downhill. I believe Jalen Hurts, like you said, it was a one-off. He's going to get this thing right. And to say he's a top three quarterback in the NFC all day long, to say he's a top 10 guy in this league all day long, he just has to go out there and once again show us. Because we can't just continue to say that he's going to be that player and then come four or five months from now, He's right back on track to what he was in 2023. I think he's going to be right on track to what he was in 2022. And we're going to be saying, this is the guy who Howie Roseman paid that money to. For sure. All right, we'll switch gears tomorrow. We're going to preview running back. We got receiver and tight end this week. Offensive line, training camp preview continuing right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. Thanks so much for downloading, watching, and listening. And let's go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.